Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. Today we're going to give you all you need to know about the pothos or the Epipremnum aureum plant. Now if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. And we always always like that thumbs up as well if you like the video and please of course share with your friends, let them know about the channel. Now, as usual, we will divide this video up into four parts. You have the purchase, the planting, the placement and the care of the plant. And in the description below, we will put the timestamps. So if you want to, you can skip forward. However, we always recommend you to watch the entire video to get all of the information about this plant. Now starting off with the purchase. Now there are a lot of different names for this plant and the most commonly used one is actually pothos in English speaking countries. Here in Sweden we call it gullranka and what we're usually talking about then is this variety here. This is the golden pothos or gullranka in Swedish but you have a lot of different names for it like the Devil's Ivy or the Hunter's Robe are a couple of them. The scientific name for this plant is Epipremnum aureum or if you want to be even more specific Epipremnum pinotum aureum. And the aureum is actually just the golden pothos which is this variety. And this is one of the most used indoor plants in the entire world. So there are probably 40 or 50 more names for this plant. But there are also a couple of varieties. So when you go out to purchase this plant, you need to know that as well. Now, first of all, when you go out to buy a pothos, you need to consider where you are planning on placing it in your home. Because the golden pothos, the normal golden pothos, can actually be placed almost anywhere in your house. But the different varieties can't. And I'll show you why. We have a couple of different ones here. I have this one here. This is the neon pothos, which actually have a, a neon green uh, color on the leaves. And it, it looks like this all the time. It's not sick. It's not, there's not a problem with this plant. It's supposed to look like this. This is a neon pothos. And we have the Marble Queen, which is this variety here, which has a little bit more of a white variegated color than the Golden Pothos, which is a little bit more yellowish in the var variegated form. And we also have the Silver Pothos. But the Silver Pothos is actually not a Pothos. This is actually a, the, the scientific name for this plant is Shindapsus pictus. So it's not really a pothos, but it's called silver pothos. Now, this plant differs so much in how you take care of it and how, where to place it and in almost every aspect. So we are actually going to make a separate video on this plant. So when we're talking about the pothos, do not consider the silver pothos because it is a quite, it's quite different from the other ones. Uh, and the last variety I have here is the Manjula pothos. Now the Manjula is actually a combination of the neon and the marble queen. It's a combination of those two and what has happened is that you get another type of variegated color on the, on the leaves and also it has the tip of the leaf here is a little bit twisted and you can never untwist it. You cannot lay it down on a flat surface because it is twisted in a quite a strange way actually. But this is the Manjula version of the pothos. Now all of these varieties, not the silver pothos, but all of the others are you take care of it exactly the same way as you do with the normal golden pothos. So, but when you go out to buy it, you need to consider which one you want. Because in every type of plant, when you have a variegated form, it means that 
it cannot withstand a dark position in your home because all of the green in the variegated forms here, all of the green spots on the leaves are where the photosynthesis is taking place. The photosynthesis is how the plant absorbs light and creates those sugars and starch, starches that actually feeds the plant. So when you have a variegated form, if you have white spots on it, it means that it doesn't photosynthesize as much as a plant that has all green leaves. Now, a couple of these varieties have white, big, big white spots on the leaves, like the manjula here is almost all white on a couple of the leaves, which means that it doesn't photosynthesize as much. It also means that you need to place this a little bit brighter than you would with the normal golden pothos. So that is the first thing you need to consider when you go out. If you need one of the varieties that doesn't have that much green in them, you have to put them in a lighter spot. However, the golden pothos is one of the simplest and most easiest plants to take care of. So, but if you need one of the others, put them a little bit lighter. Now, when you're out, the quality of the plant doesn't have to be as important as with other indoor plants because the, it is so easy to grow. Even if you get a poor quality plant, you will probably get it to j grow just as fine. Uh, it will be just as big and lush as if you bought a very expensive, more quality pothos. Uh, but as always, try and look at the roots. The pothos, all varieties of pothos, has quite an extensive root system. So what it should look like is that when you're out in the shop, just loosen the soil a little bit and take a look at the roots. Now, as you can see on this plant here, it has an extensive root system. It covers all of the pot. Uh, some of the leaves or some of the roots are actually even trying to go out of the pot. This is good when you buy a pothos, uh, if it looks like this. But if it doesn't, it's not that much of a worry. You can still buy that one. But also check when you buy this plant, uh, maybe there are 10 different golden pothos for you to choose from. So which one should you choose? Well, look at how many starters there are in the pot. Now, starters is how many stalks that are coming out of the soil. So you just check and see. One, two, three, four, five. I think I have six or seven starters in this pot here. Now, choose the plant that has the most amount of starters. Uh, because that will give you a more fuller plant quicker than if you choose one with less starters. Another thing is that just look at the leaves. How are the leaves looking? They should be on a pothos, they should be quite shiny and healthy. You shouldn't have a lot of brown spots or brown edges or something on them. If they have that, then maybe choose another plant. Now, the, all of the pothos are never bought for the flowers because you will probably never ever get a flower on your pothos. They can flower, uh, but usually they only flower when they are growing outside in their natural habitat. And the vines need to be 35, 40, 45 feet long before it even can start to create a flower. So you will never get that indoors. So you buy the pothos purely for the green foliage and the way it grows. Now, when it's time to transport your pothos from the store, uh, make sure that it doesn't get too much cold. If it's in the winter time and you know that it's cold outside, please have the shop wrap it in plastic or paper or something. It's not that sensitive. It's not as sensitive like a Dracaena or something, but I, I would recommend you to cover it with something. But if it's in the summertime, you don't have to do anything because it's not that picky uh, when you transport it. Um, but 
if it is below about 15, 16 degrees Celsius, please cover it in something before you transport it. And if it's really, really cold outside, make sure that you're transporting it home inside of a car or a bus or something that has heat in it so that you don't expose it to the cold for a long period of time because then you could have problems. Moving on to the planting of your newly purchased pothos. When you get it home, uh, like I've said a couple of times before, it, it is a very easy plant to care for, which we will take up later on in this video. But, and you don't have to repot this plant immediately. Usually when you get home, you can use the plastic pot that it comes in. But as you saw, saw before here, this plant is quite root bound. Uh, however, the pothos actually likes to be quite root bound. It likes to have very compact root system. Uh, so you don't have to repot it immediately. But if you want to repot it, it can handle a repot in a large pot with a lot of soil around it. Uh, however, we recommend you to actually repot it just in one size bigger or maybe two size bigger of a pot. And this is because, as I said, it likes to be a little bit root bound. So when it starts to grow out into that new soil, it goes quite quickly for it to be a little bit root bound. If this, this plant should be too root bound, if it doesn't have enough soil around the roots, if it has grabbed a hold of the pot so hard that you have a problem to just pull it out of the pot, you could get that, you could know that because some of the leaves could actually start to just drop off. And you, you, you don't know why. It looks healthy, there's not a problem, there are no burnt edges, there, nothing is wrong. But it just starts to lose some of the leaves. And it's usually the oldest leaves that just drop straight off. That could be that it has become too root bound. That is one way to say, okay, it's time to repot it. And then you repot it in one or two sizes bigger uh, and then it will be happy again. You don't have to use any special kind of soil for your pothos. It, it works fine in almost any type of soil. So just go out and buy a standard soil to plant it in. However, it doesn't want to have too much water in the soil. So we always recommend you to buy a soil that has a good drainage or you can you, you can get that drainage yourself by mixing it up with some pumice or maybe some perlite to just get a little bit more drainage in that soil. Because one of the most, one of the things that this plant hates is to stand in water. That also means that when you, when you replant this, we always recommend you to replant it in a pot that has drainage holes because then you will know quite easy if it's, it's standing in water because you will see in the outer pot that you have water in the bottom of the pot. If you plant this in a closed container, you will not know if it's standing in water in the bottom of the pot. So make sure you have drainage holes because it makes it that much easier for you to know that it has the amount of water it wants. You could also plant this in a, uh, in a pomus mix. A, well, now we have a video called All You Need to Know About Pomus and in that we tell you how to use pomus. And we say pure pomus, but it's actually a pomus mix between pomus, clay and long-term nutrients. But that is perfect for this plant. It really, really thrives. The roots grow even faster and get even more extensive in pomus than it does in normal soil and it goes really really fast. You could also use a self-watering system. I have one here, uh, this is the mandula pothos, that is planted in a self-watering system. It works perfectly as well. What happens is that the plant will send out water roots down to the water reservoir in the bottom uh, and those roots will be water roots. So uh, 
when we say that this plant likes to dry out a little bit, that doesn't mean in a self-watering system because it will get water roots in a self-watering system. But if you use pumice or if you use normal soil and plant it normally, it's good to have the drainage holes so that it doesn't stand in water because then it will get root rot and it will damage the plant. Now we have both the all you need to know about pumice video and we have an all you need to know about self-watering system video. We'll put that in the description below so you can go and watch that if you want. Now the pothos is a vine plant. It has long long vines that it continues to grow and can be very very long. So when you plant this in a pot you have to make a choice. You could plant it in a normal pot. Uh, but you have to know that it will grow out of that pot and just continue to try and grow on your windowsill or on the table where you put this plant. Uh, you could also plant it in a hanging pot like this and let the vines just hang down from it. Uh, but you could also try and make the plant climb, which is actually what it does in its natural environment. Now we have this variety here is actually planted with a type of metal wire that it's growing on. And then you can have it as a standing plant like this. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. However, our experience is that when the pothos gets to climb, it actually grows quicker. And I think that is some form of genetics in the plant because in its natural habitat it starts down in soil level and it usually there are a little there's not much light at soil level so it needs to climb on something like a tree trunk or so um, to get to that light. So if it grows faster that's better for the plant because it reaches the light quicker that way. Now epipremnum is actually a Greek for epi, which is on, and premnum, which means basically branch or trunk, so on trunk. Um, so it is a descriptive name for this plant. So if it, if it can grow, it's actually good for the plant. Uh, but you need to know as well that these vines can grow on anything. So if you put this plant on your windowsill, and uh, it has a wall next to it. The vine here is actually going to grow out to the wall and then it's going to climb by itself. What it does is that it sends out small air roots from each node. And that air root has the capacity to grab a hold of basically anything. It can grab a hold of the wall, it can grab a hold of if you have uh, cloth uh, in your drapes, it can climb on anything and it doesn't need a metal wire to guide it. It will climb itself. So if you don't want that, then you need to give it something else to climb on. Otherwise it will find it itself. Moving on to the placement of the pothos. Now, like I said before, depending on which pothos you use, uh, that will tell you where to put it in your house. Now starting off with the normal golden pothos. Now this is the most common one and probably the one that you will be getting to your home. This plant can be placed almost anywhere in your house. It can be placed in any direction. However, we would recommend you to avoid the southern direction or the direction where it gets a lot of direct sunlight all of the day because that can burn the plant. It can also make the green turn a little bit yellowish and it doesn't have that nice coloring anymore, but it will survive in full, full sunlight. But that is not the optimum placement. It needs a lot of direct sunlight, but you could also place it in the middle of the room and it will grow, it will survive. However, you need to give it a little bit less water and also the size of the leaves will become a little bit smaller. And if you place it in a dark spot 
what will happen is that the, the nice variegated uh, coloring that gives it the name golden pothos will start to disappear and most of the leaves will turn more green instead if you have it in a dark spot. If you have it in a very very light spot it's the opposite. You will get a lot of these nice variegated uh, coloring on the leaves. So it's basically up to you. You can place it almost anywhere but where you place it will determine how the plant will look further on. But if you choose another variety, like I said before, if you should choose the neon for instance or the marble queen which has more of these variegated white coloring or as the neon here it almost looks like it's losing its color both of these need more light because otherwise they will turn dark green so if you want to continue to have them looking like this you need to have them in a light spot otherwise they will be green another thing to, to consider is that if you place it in a uh, very light spot you will get bigger leaves you will also get smaller internodes. Now what I, what I mean by that is the more light, the bigger the leaves uh, and also smaller internodes. Now internode is the distance between every node. We have one node here that sends out one leaf. We have another node here that sends out another leaf. Now the internode is the, the distance in between those nodes. If you place this plant in a darker spot, the internodes will be longer in between all of the leaves. If it's placed very light, they will be shorter. This means that the plant will look fuller if it gets more light. And it will look a lot leggier uh, if it doesn't. As you see here, this plant has been growing somewhere where you have quite long internodes in between each leaves. It also has smaller leaves, which tells me that this, this plant has been growing a little bit darker than this plant here, which has shorter inter internodes and bigger leaves. That is also something to consider when, you, when you're placing this plant somewhere. Now, if you choose to place your plant somewhere where, they, where it gets a lot of direct sunlight, for instance, in a southern window, like I said before, it could survive in that placement, but, but make sure that it doesn't get a lot of burnt brown spots on the leaves, because that is a direct indication that you have put it in a too light spot. Now concerning the pothos, you do not need to consider the humidity like you have to when it comes to, for instance, a philodendron or a monstera that really needs that high humidity to really become full and lush. It's not that picky, the pothos is not that picky. Uh, however, if you have a high humidity, it will grow faster and grow more than if you if you have it somewhere where you have a very low humidity however it won't affect the plant you won't see any difference on it and another thing is as usual drafts this can be a big problem for some plants if you place it somewhere in the winter time where you open a window for instance and you get a lot of drafts on it however the pothos usually doesn't react to that at least if it's not a very, very cold draft. A little bit of a draft is not a problem, but if it's really cold outside, then move your plant from that drafty window until you've closed it again or until you know that the draft is gone. And also avoid placing it directly above a radiator in the winter time because that heat and that low humidity that, be, is, that is being generated from the radiator could make the leaves start to droop a little bit. It, it looks a little bit sad. However, it will survive that placement. But if you want it to continue to look very healthy, then a, straight above a radiator is not the place for it in the wintertime. Moving on to the care of the plant. 
it is a super easy plant to care for. So everything we say in this video is actually constructed to make your plant thrive. Uh, because almost anyone can take care of this plant. It's really, really easy. However, if you do it in a certain way, you will get a really nice, lush and full plant. Now, first off, first off is the watering. How much water does it want? Well, the golden pothos and all the other types of pothos actually likes to dry out a little bit in between waterings. So when you water this plant, water it a lot, let the excess water drain out, and then you just let it dry out a little bit. Use your finger to just feel on top of the soil. If you have a bigger pot, then push your finger down into the soil and when, when it's starting to get dry one or two inches down into the soil, then it's time to water it again. Uh, but make sure, and this is really important, that it never ever stands in water. So if you have a drainage hole in the bottom, and, it, and this is standing in an outside pot here, if the, there is water in that outside pot and the roots are standing in water, you will get root rot and the, the plant will react to that immediately. You will get brown, brown soft spots on, the, on, your, uh, on your plant. It will start to droop. It will just look very, very sad. Uh, if you want, and, and if you want to make it happy again, you need to take away that excess water, let it dry out completely, and then start to water it again, and be really, really sure that it's not standing in water. Now, how often should you water your pothos, any type of pothos? That's quite hard to, to tell you, because it, it's depending on where you put it in your house, how much light it gets, what size of a pot you have it planted in, how much soil you have in that pot, if you have drainage holes or if you haven't. But usually once a week is, is, the, right amount, uh, is the right amount of time in between waterings. But feel the soil to make sure that it has dried out a little bit. Now, when do you know when it's gotten too dry? Well, what happens is that if it's gotten too dry, uh, the edges of the leaf could start to become a little bit brown and you will also see that it starts to hang a little bit. It, it droops. It looks sad. That can be an indication on that you've, you've, you have let it dry out too much in between the waterings. So just water it a little bit more often and that will go away. The, uh, the leaves will go up and look shiny and happy again. But if you water it too much and the roots start to get damaged, what happens is that the leaves will turn yellow. Uh, and usually it starts with the oldest leaves. It's not the newest leaves on the, on the edges of the vines, but it's the oldest leaves that are closest to the soil. They start to get yellow. That's an indication that you've watered it too much. So just let it dry out more in between the waterings. Now, if you want your pothos to be happy and shiny and uh, just love your home, then one way is to just wipe it off every now and then with a water-filled microfiber cloth used for cleaning. Now, what I mean is that over time, it, there will be a lot of dust on the leaves. So you take a microfiber cloth, rinse that in water and just dust off the leaves. And what you're actually doing is that you're helping the plant to regulate, um, to regulate when it's really, really hot. Because when you're dusting off, it, off the leaves, you're helping the stomatas, the small windows that are opening and closing on the leaves, to actually function as they should. So by doing this every now and then, and uh, you don't have to do this every day or every week. Just when you see that it's starting to get a little bit dusty, just do that and you, it will reward you by being happier, getting fuller and just loving your home. Now, if you want to know more about the stomata and how that works 
in your plant, we have a video called how to grow your plants bigger and thicker. Now we'll leave a link to that in this description below if you want to go and check that out. After a while, your pothos will become bigger and it will become longer. Every vine will become really, really long. So what you'll have to do is to start to prune your plant. And the pothos actually likes to be pruned. The more you prune your plant, the fuller it will get. We have one here that is really, really long. And as you can see, it, it, it has lo it's long, it's leggy. And how do I get this to be even fuller? Well, I prune it. And what you do when you prune this plant is that you just cut in between two nodes here, in the internode here, you can just cut off that long vine, use a shearer or a scissor or something, make sure that it's clean before you make the cut so you don't transfer anything from your tools, but you just cut that off like that. You don't have to be very careful, just prune it off, leave a little bit from the, the leaf here of the stalk here. Uh, now what will happen here is that it will start to regrow from this node that is on the edge where I've just made that cut, but it will also start to grow from the other nodes along this vine. Now why does it do that? Why hasn't it been doing that on these long, long vines? Well, it works like that because you have a hormone inside of each plant that is called auxin. Now, auxin works almost like a bouncer at a party. What it does, it, uh, it, the plant sends out the auxin to the edges, to, the, to the, the tips of each vine here. And then the auxin just tells the vine that only where, where it can grow is actually from the tip here. All of the other nodes here are not allowed to grow. That's what the auxin is doing. It's suppressing the other nodes from branching out. But by removing the tip of a vine like this, just cutting that off, you are removing the auxin, at least for a little while, before the plant can send out new auxins. And what happens is that you are activating the other nodes that are dormant on the vine and they will start to grow. Now the auxin has a very important function because by telling the plant that it can only grow from the tip, it's actually do making the plant bigger. And that is usually in nature what you want. You want the plant to grow and use a trunk to get as high as possible to get all of that light. So it doesn't want to branch out, it wants to get to that light. And the auxin is the function of that. But by cutting and pruning your pothos regularly, you will get it to be fuller, wider, and look even more lush. Now just to be clear about the auxin, every vine on your plant has auxin at the tips that works like this bouncer. Uh, but when you cut the auxin off, it will reappear again. It will take a little time, but when you cut it off, it will start to branch out from the other nodes, but then there will be new auxin that makes the plant to start to grow bigger again. So it's not bad that you are cutting away the auxin. It will appear again. Now, all of the different types of pothos, they, they don't need that much fertilizer. Uh, it will grow and become big without that much fertilizer. However, we would recommend you to use fertilizer a couple of times a season. So from March until October, you need to add fertilizer a couple of times during that period when the plant is in its active period. Now just buy any type of fertilizer, it doesn't need to be a specialized type. Uh, it's more important that you use fertilizer than you use a specific type of fertilizer. Just read on the box what it says, mix it up with the water and add it when you water a couple of times every season and your pothos will be fine. Now the pothos is simple in so many ways. It's easy to take care of. It will survive in your home 
almost anywhere. Uh, you don't need to give it that much fertilizer. And also, you will probably, or you will very rarely get a problem with pests. But they can, they can be a problem. And usually, what the pothos gets is mealybugs. That is the most common type of pest that attack this plant. But we have had some plants that have been attacked by spider mites as well. But usually it's mealybugs. And mealybugs are quite easy to see with the naked eye because they're quite big and they look like small furry cotton balls. So uh, what I usually do if you see one is that you can just pick them away with your hands go out, buy a pesticide and spray the plant. Uh, just follow the instructions on that pesticide you use that are used for mealybugs. Usually you only need one or two sprayings and then you will get rid of the mealybugs. Uh, however, you have a lot of leaves on your pothos. So don't just remove one mealybug if you see one mealybug because it could have been laying eggs. There could be others that you haven't seen somewhere on this big plant. So be sure if you get mealybugs or if you get, get spider mites, go out and buy a pesticide. You could also use just a uh, liquid soap water. Works fine as well. Just mix some soap with water, spray it on the plant and it will work as well. But use something. Don't just pick them and then think that you will be fine because then you could get quite a problem because when mealybugs get a hold of your plants, they will be everywhere. And when they get everywhere, then it's quite difficult to get rid of them. So use a pesticide if you see something on your plants. Now, the pothos is actually a little bit poisonous. Uh, it won't kill you, but if you were, were to eat the plant, it could you could react by vomiting and you could also get swelling on your tongue and in, in your mouth. And it's also poisonous for animals. So cats and dogs should not be eating from this plant. And of course, be very aware of your children if you have small children so that they won't reach the vines so that they will bite into it. So if you have small children, place your plant somewhere where they can't reach it. Now the last thing about the pothos is that you could sometimes notice that there are water on the tips of the leaves of the pothos. You could also see that on your windowsill you have small drops of water. And that is from the pothos. And this is not something you have to worry about. It's not something, something that is dangerous for your plant. The reason for this is that, the, uh, like we've said a couple of times, the Pothos has a massive root system and all of those roots can actually suck up too much water in the system. And what it does to regulate that is that it pushes that out from the leaves. And you will notice it by on the tips of the leaves, you will see small drops of water. Uh, it's nothing to worry about. You don't have to do anything about it. It just means that the plant is very, very active. You could also see that it could bleed from the vines when you've pruned it. If you happen to prune it when it's very, very active, when it has a lot of water in the system, when you cut, made that cut, it could bleed for a couple of minutes or even for up to an hour. This is not something to worry about either. It's fairly common with the pothos. So just, uh, you could, buy some small, you, there are waxes that you can put on bleeding wounds on plants. You could put that on the vine if you want to. However, we've never done that. Uh, we just leave it, it will drop a little bit, it will bleed a little bit, but it will close that wound and you won't hurt the plant. So this is something you need to know can happen to your pothos, but it's not dangerous for the plant. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends as well. Now, until next time, hi